Hi everybody, I'm Julie Kerr, writer and director of the romantic comedy Geek Loves Punk and today I'm going to, or tonight, <laughs> I am going to talk to you about uh, if you've never made a movie ever, a short film or a feature film, like a 90 minute film, I am going to teach you three steps, uh, three tips on how to get into filmmaking if that's your thing. I uh, directed a, it's 90 minutes, a romantic comedy. I just got a Facebook message from my high school buddy who is like giving me tons of compliments on the trailer. That's exciting. On my website, I have an email list and I send out this weekly email, uh, basically weekly email check-in thing. And I send out just a weekly email list, a motivational email list, just checking in and letting my the people I love know what's going on with me. And usually it has to do with uh, filmmaking and that kind of thing. I got a request to make some YouTube videos about, you know, the process of filmmaking. And I can totally do that. And what I wanted to start with is kind of, this is going to be kind of motivational. And you're going to need this first before you pick up a camera. But after you watch this video, you can pick up a camera or pick one up now while you're watching it and <laughs> and play around with it. I don't know. Okay. Step one for if you want to get into filmmaking, uh, yes, this is going to be the motivational video for that. And, and I'm going to talk to you if you've just never done it before. So uh, step one, if you've never made a movie ever, uh, I'm going to let you know, just embrace the technology. So I think if you never made a film, and you're feeling in intimidated by how a camera works, how editing software works, potentially directing actors, writing a screenplay, any of that stuff. If any of that stuff like intimidates you because you've never done it before, I just want to let you know that's okay. Directing a film, what's actually really, it, opinions, excuse my language, opinions, everybody has opinions. I'm just going to give my opinion. I live in the San Francisco Bay Area. There's people out there and people out there who can be just a smidgen um, pretentious about the filmmaking thing, which is totally fine. Uh, but I tend to be more laid back about filmmaking and I'm a comedian or I, I do comedies. So I'm going to give you the laid back uh, opinion on filmmaking. All right. The most important thing if you're going to direct a movie, just letting you know, is having something to say and controlling the tone of a film. And those are the two most important things, like ever. <laughs> so please don't let the technology scare you because you're gonna learn the technology. You're gonna learn how a camera works. You're gonna learn how by doing, learning by doing. You're gonna learn how editing works. Uh, you're going to learn how screenwriting works, all that stuff. And by all means, if you want to take classes, that kind of thing, go for it. But don't let the technology stop you from making a movie because you'll learn it. And, and it's not as if you're feeling scared or like, I was kind of a, or I still am in a way, I was kind of a hillbilly from Virginia. So like, I moved out here to San Francisco, California, where I live, and I, I saw like fancy you know, camera equipment and I saw sound equipment. This is the boom mic. I think I'm so rusty. This is like the stick. <laughs> I think it's called a boom. So there's a boom and then the, right now there's sound people rolling their eyes. Pretentious sound people. Or right now there's really nice sound people being like, Julie! <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> as far as who's watching this. So, uh, um, so anyway, there's like the stick that they hold and clearly I'm not a professional sound person. There's the stick that they hold. There's like a boom mic that's attached to the stick. Pretty sure the stick's called a boom, but it's a fancy stick is essentially what it is. And, uh, and by the way, sound people are super important. Super important. Love you sound people. <laughs> Ooh, Edward. Love you Edward. He was the sound guy on my movie. Shout out to Edward and Raul who are the sound people on my movie. So the point is just like, don't let, don't let the techno technology part of filmmaking like kind of scare you or intimidate you because you're, you're going to learn all that stuff and you'll learn it pretty quickly. 
And once you get into filmmaking, it's kind of, I hate to say it, like it's not necessarily, it's just not that big of a deal once you kind of get used to doing it. Uh, also, because the most important aspect of filmmaking, if you're going to be directing, is actually just setting the tone of a film. And then um, <laughs> what you're really controlling is the tone of a film and having something to say. So, uh, and look, if you have something to say, well, you should have something to say. So if you want to make a film and the, it, it doesn't have to be crazy sophisticated, right? Uh, cause I'm a comedic, at the end of the day, I'm a comedic director. Um, so, you know, I'm never, I doubt I'm ever going to make anything like what, uh, Christopher Nolan does. Uh, and, and I fully acknowledge like, hey, Christopher Nolan's a genius, uh, but I just know my influences for me, they're more along the lines of Mel Brooks, who I think is also a genius, uh, but, or, or Walt Disney, and, and um, even a little bit of John Waters if we're going to talk like indie stuff, uh, but, uh, but, because uh, his movies tend to have heart in them, they're definitely indie, but they tend to have a lot of heart to them, but, uh, but anyway, it's okay, if you want to be a filmmaker, uh, yeah, what you're controlling is tone and what you're control. you definitely want to have something to say. And if you want, in my opinion, <laughs> okay. And then the other thing is it doesn't have to be anything like crazy sophisticated. So you could, if you just want to say, if you're really, if you have a garden and you're very enthusiastic about your garden, so you want to make a film about how everyone should eat vegetables out of a garden. I don't know, anything like that. Great, that, that's what you do. Make a film about whatever. So, and, uh, and then the genre. So let's say you wanna say something serious, like you wanna say uh, people shouldn't be mean, because <laughs> let's go with that. Uh, you, so that's like your theme or your message or whatever. Hey, don't be mean. But you can, but okay, great, that's your theme. Now you can pick whatever genre you want. So you can pick the genre of killer clowns, <laughs> you know what I mean? So you take the, the genre of killer clowns, if that's what you want to do, and then, but the message of your movie is don't be mean. Uh, and I mean, that sounds like fun to me. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, if you make a film, it could be like a serious drama by all means, go for it. Or it could be like a B-movie science fiction movie, which sounds awesome. Uh, you could go that route. So it could be any genre that you want it to be. But you do want it to have something to say. Uh, so the movie... Well, Par the movie that won the Oscar recently is Parasite. But Parasite, well, it was a... I, I would call it a horror film. It was brilliant. Brilliant. I saw it three times in the theater, twice in color, once in black and white. So the, uh, what's my point? Well, Parasite was like a serious movie, a uh, pretty serious movie, a really good movie, brilliant. But uh, the guy who uh, directed it, um, my one of my really good friends is Korean American and she speaks, uh, to me, she speaks fluent Korean. And apparently I was saying, his name, the director of Parasite's name wrong. I said it like four or five times. I I do apologize. I d <laughs> it's a beautiful language. I just don't speak fluent Korean. But uh, I'm gonna get his name right. Uh, I'm gonna say his name. There it is. Okay. So I was saying uh, I'm American. I was saying Bong Joon Ho, and I said it like five times. And then finally, my friend was like Julie. <laughs> She's like, Julie, it's not bong. <laughs> she said, uh, she, I mean, she wanted me to say it in correct uh, Korean, which totally makes sense. She said, it's bong, <laughs> Junho, which does sound better. I, I was wrong. I was totally in the wrong. So Parasite directed by uh, bong Junho. I hope I'm doing that right. Bong Junho. Okay, so yeah, like he did. He did Parasite, which is brilliant. Absolutely, that movie's outstanding. But he also did a really great monster movie called The Host. Totally recommend it. He did like kind of a comic book ish uh, movie called Snowpiercer, which is pretty good. So I mean, 
it's like even him, he did some great like genre movies uh, before he did like Parasite, which is totally brilliant. So my point is like, uh, you know, you can make like a monster movie. You can make um, a cool like low budget. Well, hey, I don't know you. You could be a billionaire watching this right now. It don't gotta be. It don't gotta be low budget if you have the money. But um, but anyway, just just saying like, in a way, the sky's the limit. So the the point is uh, essentially. Uh, so, so anyway, even Bong Joon Ho, even he like he did a cool monster movie. He did a, a fun like. Well, I don't know if you call Snowpiercer, but Snowpiercer because it is this. Yeah, it's like a fun, it has a good message, but it's like a fun comic book movie-ish. Uh, before he did Parasite, which is like a pretty serious movie, which has comedic moments, but it's a pre pretty powerful serious movie is what I would call it, with some comedic moments. But, but anyway, the point is, don't let the technology of filmmaking kind of scare you or intimidate you or anything like that. If you feel this stirring in your heart and your soul to make movies, you should totally do it. And you'll learn the technical side of it. And I hate to say this, but the technical side of it, I say this with love, and there's just plenty of people out there or out there who might like not agree with me, but the technical side of filmmaking, it's not as important in my opinion, and I'm a bleeding heart, as the technical side, not as important, uh, even though I know brilliant, brilliant, brilliant technical people. It's not as important, but it's expensive. The technical side tends to be kind of pri pricey. I'll get to that. The technical side is not quite as important. It is important, but it's not as important as controlling the tone of the film, one, and having something to say. And it, you know, and it, you don't have to, don't, don't set the bar too high. It doesn't have to be Christopher Nolan. <laughs> What's that movie he did? Interception? No, that's that's a football term. Inception? Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, I'm a comedic film director. Okay, so, but, and hey, again, Christopher Nolan, genius. Absolute genius, for sure. I'm not worthy, right? But just, just don't be intimidated by it, you know what I mean? If you're like, I need it to be as brilliant as Inception? Uh then you're kind of like you're psyching yourself out of filmmaking. Don't do that. Just just go for it. Make a movie. And don't be afraid for it to quote unquote suck. You know what I mean? Like you're just learning your craft and, and you learn, in my opinion, by doing. And you're not just learning the logistics and the technical side because that is important. Like making sure you get good sound, making sure the, the lighting looks kind of decent. <laughs> I'm using, I'm, oh, my movie was micro budget. Oh, I should tell you now, I'm not a billionaire. <laughs> so my movie uh, would be considered micro budget. That's a fancy word for, I didn't have no money. <laughs> I had a little bit, I had a little bit, but it had a budget, just not like a big one. So, so anyway, my point, so the technical side, you're gonna learn that side for sure. Like. Uh, lighting, cameras, editing, post-production, sound design, etc. Cetera, et cetera. You're gonna learn all that stuff. Really what you're learning when you start practicing with the filmmaking, you're learning tone. Uh, and controlling the tone of a film, if you just think of whoever your favorite film director is, um, th their movies have a certain feel to them, right? Christopher Nolan's movies feel. Even uh, boom, Jun Ho's uh, movies, they have a feeling to them. Because uh, I, I recently went back and watched Snowpiercer. They just generate this feeling. Um, uh, who else? Uh, Sofia Coppola, I just watched on Netflix. I think it's called The Bling Ring. And I really liked her directing style because she directs in a way, I don't know if I'd, maybe I would direct in that kind of way, I'm not sure. But I was really impressed because it's so different than how I would direct something. <laughs> I just compared myself to Sofia Coppola, uh, which is bonkers because she's better. <laughs> she's better than me. <laughs> I'm okay with her being better than me. So uh, I was like, I can't believe I just compared myself to her. But let's go with, I could never draw, uh, anyway. So Sofia Coppola, um, yeah, I really enjoyed watching The Bling Ring because it just felt like a Sofia Coppola movie in a good way. Uh, and I really think the star of the bling ring, which I didn't, I really enjoyed on Netflix. The star of that movie 
in a way, like I just what was what kept me watching was the style of directing that it was directed in. It it, it just had this cool flow to it. Uh, so it felt like a Sofia Coppola movie. Right. So so basically, you'll learn the technical side, but. Uh, but what you're learning is how to control the tone of the film, and what you're also learning is um, you want to have something to say. Uh, it can be in any genre that you want, you just want to have something to say. Like Mel Brooks, his movie Blazing Saddles, which I just found out was co-written by uh, Richard Pryor. No wonder it's so brilliant. But anyway, the movie Blazing Saddles by Mel Brooks, it's a comedy, and I think it's brilliant. Uh, but the point, the whole point of Blazing Saddles is, hey, racism is bad. I totally agree with that. Couldn't agree with that more. And so the movie, it, Blazing Saddles might not be everyone's cup of tea, but, um, and it's a comedy, but, but the message of the movie is pretty clear. Okay. So that is, so step one, just embrace the technology of filmmaking. Just uh, pick up a camera and start making movies. Cause yeah, you're practicing how a camera works, but what you're really practicing is um, learning how to say something through the fart art, <laughs> to through the fart, uh, through the art of filmmaking, you're learning how to have something to say. And you're just learning how to control the tone of a film, whatever that is for you. Okay, step number two for getting into filmmaking, you wanna find people who will high five you for filmmaking. Uh, so you, a high five is like this. <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, okay, so what you want is people who are going to support you. And that just means when you tell people, hey, I made a movie, they're going to go, yay! Okay, <laughs> that's so cool. So, uh, Stephen Pressfield, one of my favorite authors of all time, he has a book called The War of Art. And it's Break Through the Blocks and Win Your Creative Inner ba Battles. And you can see my copy, it's like all bent and there's like, coffee stains and I've read this I've you see it's all highlighted I've read this book 50 times oh my gosh I almost just ripped the cover off yeah see how toe up it is and yeah okay great book because I've read this 50 times uh it's a great book on just helping you helping you it motivates you to just follow your dreams but he he says like when you start to have ambition and follow your dreams, uh, you're beating something called resistance. And he calls resistance kind of like this, he, he says it better, but he basically says resistance is anything that stops you from following your dreams. And resistance is kind of like this kinetic energy that gets in the way. And sometimes it's negative thoughts, but also, it's, sometimes it's people saying, if you say, hey, I'm a filmmaker, you're going to get kind of negative people who say, who do you think you are? That's what you're going to get. Uh, and you just got to go, all you got to do is say to these people, uh, I'm just a person <laughs> making a movie. No biggie. <laughs> so, and God bless you. Uh, peace. Uh, Thumbs up, God bless. But you can't listen to those people. What slowed me down in filmmaking is I would hear people say, who do you think you are? And it would slow me down because I would listen to them. And I would think to myself, well, who do I think I am? Look, y'all, it's not a big deal. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It, it's not a big deal in the sense like anybody can make a movie in a way uh, so I just think that, yeah, don't listen to those people. And here's what happens to me. I get like two reactions and I've gotten to the point where I wait to tell people that I'm a filmmaker. So I live in San Francisco where the main industry up here is like tech, like, uh, like Facebook is up here, Google's up here, Twitter's up here. So like the main jobs, Salesforce is a really good one. Uh, the main jobs are like tech jobs and the main industry pretty much is like tech. 
Uh, so I, my assumption is if I went to Los Angeles, is that everyone there is a filmmaker? Because that's the main industry. The main industry is entertainment. So, but up here in San Francisco, there's, there's like a teeny tiny small filmmaking um, community, in my opinion. There's a little bit of commercial work that comes up here. Like, I think they shoot a lot of, uh, like, car commercials up here. So you can get some paid, like, acting work if that's your thing. But for the most part, the industry is in um, L.A. Also, we have Pixar Animation Studios. That's in the San Francisco Bay Area. And we have Lucasfilm. That's in the San Francisco Bay Area. But other than those two studios, this is pretty much a tech uh, a tech city. Okay, so here's what happens like when I, I've gotten to the point where I wait to tell people that, I'm a, that, I, that I made a romantic comedy. The reason I wait is because every once in a while, like if I say, oh, la la la, I made a romantic comedy. Like if they're like, what do you do or what are you into? Like if you're just being friendly. What I get is every once in a while, I get people kind of like, the only way I can describe it is uh, acting weird. <laughs> they act weird because all of a sudden they start treating me as if I'm like uh, Steven Spielberg. And what I want to say is, uh, the <laughs> here's what I want to say. Uh, the amount of money that Steven Spielberg has made as a film di director is uh, different than the amount of money uh, I've made as a filmmaker. <laughs> okay, like, there's no comparison. I've made a teeny tiny bit of money. So this is how much I've made off filmmaking. And don't get me wrong, I have ambition. Like, I, I feel a calling. Uh, personally, I feel a calling from God to, to do this. So this is what I want to do. But I've made like this much money from filmmaking as opposed to uh, Steven Spielberg. He's made like this. <laughs> okay, anyway. But still, in San Francisco, every once in a while, if I say I made a movie, like a romantic comedy, uh, with a very, very low budget, uh, extremely low budget, Every once in a while, a person will start getting weird, and they're they're treating me like I'm I'm Steven Spielberg, but not like in a nice way, not like oh my gosh you made Jurassic Park. Uh, it was more like or oh my gosh you made a you made a romantic comedy. They they're kind of like uh, they just get mean. <laughs> I don't know to, I don't know I don't know how how else to put it. They just get kind of mean and whatever. And like, I don't know why, and they, they kind of get this attitude, who do you think you are? And um, anybody, can make a anybody can make a movie, not anyone can make Jurassic Park because you need like a bajillion dollars <laughs> to make Jurassic Park. Even people with bajillions of dollars, they... You know, you, you still, to make, you gotta have some talent to make something as good as Jurassic Park. But, but anyway, so, uh, <laughs> my point is, yeah, every once in a while you get people like, who do you think you are? And, 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 and they just get weird or kind of mean, uh, which is why I wait. One of my friends in, here in San Francisco, he also made a romantic comedy. He actually went down to L.A. and made it in L.A., uh, but he had a budget, like a pretty decent budget. I mean, not millions of dollars, but still, it, it was, I don't want to tell his business, but it was good. It, it was like leaning, well, yeah, anyway, oh, I don't know if I should say, but it was a decent amount, it's definitely a decent amount of money. <laughs> it was still a time, it was still a lot more than mine. No, no complaints, but, but anyway, he made a movie, he's great, I consider him one of my soulmates. Uh, and I mean, we're, we're friends, it's platonic, but still I consider him like, like we were in the trenches together as far as filmmaking goes. And, oh, and I, I just said the word trenches, so any war veterans watching this, uh, thank you for your service, and I really appreciate that. I signed up, I signed up to be in the military when I was 18, and the military said, hey, you're too chubby. <laughs> they wouldn't have me. 
So I went to college and got an English degree. But anyway, so anyway, anyone in the military who's watching this, thank you for your service. I tried to uh, join the, the military. The army said, nope, get out of here, chubsters. They didn't say that. They did say you're too chubby. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Uh, side, that was just a side note. Okay, so what I want to say is the point is, oh, yes. Uh, step two, find people who will give you high fives for making movies. So at first I was like, yay, I'm making movies. And I wasn't being braggadocious. I was just being happy because I finally found my thing. Like everyone has their thing that they're into. My mom really likes to crochet. Uh, my little sister loves being a parent. She's like a really great mom. So everyone has like their thing. And my thing just happens to be filmmaking. Like I just, I finally found not just my thing, but like my mission in life. I finally found my calling. So I would be all happy-go-lucky talking about filmmaking. I wasn't bragging. I was just talking about something I really, really, really loved. Um, but anyway, but people got, <laughs> people got mean. So I actually wait, I wait to, th but here, the reason I brought up my, my friend who, who also made a romantic comedy, 90 minute romantic comedy, and, and he had a, he had a pretty decent budget, but I, in here in San Francisco, I see people get kind of mean to him. I was like, dude, why are you being mean to my friend? <laughs> my friend is a great guy. He gives me advice all the time. Um, why, why are you being mean to him? Because <laughs> cause it's not like I'm Steven Spielberg and he's George Lucas. Again, I cannot, because he, I mean, I don't want to tell his business, but he didn't, he didn't make a profit off his movie because it's hard. It's hard, 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 hard. It doesn't even mean the movie's not good. It is a good movie. It's a great movie, but it's just, it's just so independent. So like for Hollywood, when they make a movie, it costs millions of dollars and then they, and then, um, for marketing, they spend millions. Of, sometimes the marketing budget is as much as the you know production budget. So if they spend like twenty five million to make it, and by the way, that would be considered low budget by Hollywood terms. I'm sorry, I'm laughing because these numbers sound insane. Because I grew up, I grew up very poor for all intents and purposes. So I, the one thing I had to get used to when I moved, when I started got, getting into filmmaking is hearing all these numbers and like, <laughs> so anyway, and like, what? Okay. So by Hollywood standards, 25 million is considered low budget. Just let that sink in. <laughs> I'm just so used to hearing these numbers and it sounding bonkers. Okay. So anyway, so they'll spend 25 million. On a, okay, they'll spend 25 million to make the movie, and then they'll spend another 25 million on the marketing budget. They're like equal. So my point in saying that, oh, so if you're gonna do an indie filmmaking thing, uh, like and make a 90 minute film, just understand that, uh, oh, the reason why you should be kind to independent filmmakers, usually what that means is they spent a lot of money, usually it's their money, or it's their friends and family's money uh, to make a movie, and they, it's just, it's hard to make a profit off of, of movies if you're independent. Okay, so cause like, anyway, so my friend who made a romantic comedy, I made a romantic comedy, every once in a while I'll see people be mean to him, and I was like, why are you being mean to him? He's a nice guy. Like, what is happening here? And I know, like, his movie didn't do as well as he would have liked. So it's kind of like, I don't know, why are you being mean when people get mean? But the reason, you know, the reason people get mean is, I have no idea. But no, <laughs> the reason people get mean is when they know that I made a romantic comedy or my friend made a romantic comedy, as far as their association with filmmaking, Actually, I have no idea why they get mean. <laughs> no, 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 I know what it is. They get mean because they just don't understand how filmmaking works. And so filmmaking is pretty much micro-budget filmmaking. It's pretty much like kind of starting your own business. And if you start your own business, you either get investors or you're just kind of spending your own money. Uh, but the reason, okay, the reason people get mean, they don't know any better, so they think 
yeah, they don't know any better, so they don't understand how filmmaking works. They don't realize that filmmaking is like a crap load of work, because it is. Um, and also, they're dealing with something that Steven Pressfield calls resistance. So, the resistance that they're dealing with is, hey, here I am following my dreams, and I'm not making tons of money doing it, but I love it, and I trust in God that things are going to pan out for me. Uh, and I think because I'm beating my own what's called resistance, I'm getting up every day and working on this, a lot of people aren't beating their resistance and following their dreams, so it just makes them feel kind of insecure or whatever. Uh, but the reason I'm, I'm making these videos is I want to encourage everybody to follow their dreams, make their movies, write their novels, you know, whatever. Whatever your dream is, be the best parent ever. Crochet, like, so many blankets if that's your dream or whatever. My mom crochets. <laughs> do, do whatever your dream is. Totally, totally, totally follow your dreams. Like, go for it. And it's going to be hard. It's going to be so hard. <laughs> but it'll be worth it because I have faith that things will pan out, you know? So, but in order for you to make it as a filmmaker or to make it as just a person in general, you're gonna need people who are gonna be a source of positive uh, support. So you're gonna need people giving you high fives and saying, this is awesome, you're doing great, that's awesome. And what I recommend is, uh, there's some life coachy people I would totally recommend. So. One of my favorite authors is Brandon Bouchard. He has a book called High Performance Habits, but I really like his social media presence. It's just so positive. The other person I would say is Marie Forleo. She has a great book. And yeah, so just find the positive people to follow who can, can motivate you and high five you for following your dreams when it's like super hard. It's just, it's just a lot of work to follow your dreams and you don't make a lot of money at first. <laughs> I still haven't made like tons of money, but I got a lot of momentum going. My my high school buddy just Facebook messaged me, so things are looking good. I've made a little bit of money. But yes, there's quite the pay difference between me and Steven Spielberg. I don't know why people get mean. Okay, whatever. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Step three to, uh, to, to, if you want, you know, intro into filmmaking, step three to uh, advice as far as getting into filmmaking is when I first started getting into filmmaking, I noticed that, oh, this is a medium that costs money. Uh, and filmmaking is getting more and more and more accessible, and it is so much more accessible than it used to be. And George Lucas, uh, who created Star Wars, there's an interview where George Lucas talks about back when movies were made with film. I mean, they still are. They still are. But back when movies were only made with film, he would have to, to make movies, he would have to, basically what would happen is when these huge, when what happens, okay, when these big movies, they would film and they needed to like change, basically when the film was out of film that they had filmed and they needed to change like the film canisters, there'd be like a little bit of film left over and they would like, I guess like toss it. George Lucas said what you had to do to make films was you'd have to go to wherever these like film camera places were and you take those leftover reels that was just a little bit left over and you had to put that together uh, and use that to make movies if you didn't have tons of money. And I was like, whoa. So you had to kind of like scavenger hunt for like actual film. Um, I thought that was an interesting story. And then he said, back then you had to use films. So he said the lowest you could make a movie as far as, far as budget goes he, we're, I think we're talking like 60s or 70s, but he was like, it was at least six figures. He's like, you, you had to at least have six figures to make, to make a feature film. And I was like, holy crap, because that's a lot of money. Uh, so, and he was just talking about, like, that's how it used to be. Like, the, that's the lowest you could go if you wanted to make a feature film. 
<laughs> and I thought that was a pretty inter interesting story. So today the technology has changed. You can get a high definition camera if you want to use a video camera, which is what I'm filming on now. You can get that at Best Buy for two, three hundred dollars if that's in your budget. You know what I mean? I don't know you. I don't know your life. And right now with the coronavirus, things are kind of iffy for everybody. But yeah, you can go to Best Buy and buy like you know a camera for three hundred bucks. It's high definition. It's good enough. <laughs> it is. Uh, and then. Um, but still, that's three hundred dollars. You can get SD cards. I think they're about twenty, thirty dollars each. So, you'll, so you know, it's cheaper than six figures. But then you'll need you need screenwriting software. There is some free screenwriting software. Uh, I know the industry standard is Final Draft. It's not too bad, but I think you can get Final Draft for either like thirty dollars a month, or you can just buy it for two hundred dollars. But you see how this is adding up, and then you're gonna need hard drives to put your footage on. Hard drives are about $100 each. Uh, then, are you gonna pay your crew, or are you paying your actors? Uh, are you gonna have a makeup artist? Are you gonna pay for the makeup? Uh, well, you gotta pay for the makeup at least, um, but uh, if you're not gonna pay your crew, um, you know, you gotta find people who are willing to work. It's called deferred pay, it means they'll you know, if the movie makes money, they get money. So, yeah. And then you, uh, or you pay them, or you like, you know, pay them a fee, that kind of thing. I'm in California, so like workers comp is like a thing. So you have to keep that in mind. I forget how that works, but I think it's like a California law. You have to like, you have to pay for workers comp, that kind of thing. Uh, so you see, this adds up. This really adds up. So that, that's why it's like, my advice is don't be a filmmaker unless you really want to be one. I was at a comic book convention a long time ago because I'm a nerd and I love comic book conventions. But the creator of the X-Files, Chris Carter, uh, someone asked him, what advice do you give to filmmakers? And Chris Carter said, don't be a filmmaker. <laughs> and he said the reason why he's like, look. And this is Chris Carter, because he, he, they were there promoting like the latest X-Files movie. And he said, look, I got like two hours of sleep last night because I was working on the film edit. And I was like, whoa. And then he's like, and now I'm here promoting it. And he's like, <laughs> he just talks about not getting a lot of sleep and it's so much work. Anyway, so, all right. Here's what I want to say. When I got into filmmaking, I saw like, whoa, this stuff is editing software. You got to pay for editing software. Okay, I just saw like, wow, this is a medium that costs money, you know? And, and hey, it, it's getting cheaper and cheaper as we go, you know what I mean? Like everything I just named off, everything I just told you that you uh, sort of kind of need to pay for, uh, it's doable, like it's doable. I did it, like essentially I was making a couple of dollars over minimum wage um, in my day job when I made my movie. So I was like, I did it <laughs> with the help of like 10 to 15 to 20 geniuses, geniuses, uh, I, I, uh, I did it. So it's doable, it's just, it's just hard. You can see, like I just told you all the stuff you need to make a movie. Um, and when I think about it, if you wanna be a writer, all you need is like, you know, like this, this is my little idea journal, but all you need is like a notebook. This was $2 at like Ross or whatever. They have like journals there and like a pen. This was free. I got it at my sister's church or whatever. So uh, if you want to practice writing, this is less than $5 to practice writing. You know, you're just practicing your writing skills. But, but filmmaking, <laughs> you know, it, it just costs a little more money than that, right? And that's how the cookie crumbles. So. But I mean, it's getting more affordable if you have like, this is a smartphone, you know, your smartphone has a camera. So you can do stuff with your, you can make movies with your smartphone. You just gotta, you know, if you're making micro budget films, you gotta roll with the punches a little bit because you don't have money. Okay, so you're not Steven Spielberg, unless Steven Spielberg is watching this. And why would he be doing that? <laughs> He's better than me. Okay, so anyway, uh... <laughs> All right, so filmmaking, so here's the deal. When I first got into filmmaking, like, whoa, like this costs money, like zoinks, I'm a nerd. So 
What I realized was like, okay, not only do I need to learn the craft of filmmaking, because yeah, not only do I need to learn the artsy fartiness, <laughs> excuse me, the artsy fartsiness of filmmaking, like having a voice and um, setting the tone of a film. Not only do I need to learn those things, but I was like, I need to learn something called marketing because filmmaking, Okay, so now I'm gonna quote a book. This is a book called Letters to Young Filmmakers by Howard Suber. I hope I'm saying that right. Suber, Saber, Suber. Anyway, this is a really good, extremely good book. Okay, but he talks about Suber, Howard Suber. Uh, Letters to Young Filmmakers. Great book. I highly recommend it. He says in this, um, there one of, basically these are students asking him stuff. <clears throat> and he, they say, okay, he, the, the, someone wrote him a letter and said, how much does a tip, typical film cost and, and why? His answer is, more money than you have access to or more than you will ever be willing to invest of your own money. Uh, he's keeping it real, right? And he's talking about the film industry in LA. Like ideally LA, ideally in LA, ideally you go to Los Angeles, you pitch your movie idea to a film producer. They're like, that's such a great idea. Here's $150 million to do it. Cool, thank you, I will do that now. <laughs> I will take that check. Ideally, that's what happens in LA. <laughs> but it's highly, com but it's hard, it's highly competitive, la la la, I'm in San Francisco, so. But that's what he's saying, like he's saying, ideally you wanna use the studio money or other people's money to make your movies. That's not what I did, by the way. By the way. I did it differently, but I'm different. Okay. Okay, and then he says, independent films don't have the same scale of costs, but they still represent more money than most of the people who make them have in their possession. That's totally true. Um, even if you make the least expensive feature film you possibly can, the chances are good that you'll need to ask one to 200 people to work on a deferred basis. I didn't need to do that, but I did ask 20 if I add in the actors, 30 to 40 people, um, 200 to work on a deferred basis, which means they'll get paid from the film's profits. Since most independent films do not get distribution, most never have any profit. And those people who discover they work for nothing are not likely to do so again. Yeah. I mean, I, well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to elaborate because I agree with what he's saying. So you may not be risking millions of dollars. I didn't, didn't have it, didn't have access to it. I did not risk millions of dollars, not even close. But whether you're making a big budget studio film or an independent film, you're risking a great deal. I agree. You're risking like a crap load of work from you and like a group of people for deferred payment. So yeah, it's kind of like volunteering, but not really. But because I have a spreadsheet where if the movie makes money and my dream is I want to write big fat checks to everyone who like worked on it. But anyway, that's my dream. That's my ambition. Okay, so here's the deal. When I discovered and I saw, whoa, this is just a medium that costs money. Like, whoa, I was like, okay, I need to study marketing because in a way, and I'm talking like, hey, I grew up poor and I know like talking about money is such a triggering, can be such a triggering topic for so many people. But I was like, if, if this is my calling, if this is what I feel God wants me to do, I got to learn marketing. These movies in, in one way or another, unless you're, unless you're Hollywood and you have oodles and oodles of money and they can afford to take a hit sometimes, they can't take too many hits. They go out of business like any other business, but still. Uh, they can take a hit or two and they're fine, but on my level, since I'm doing this, you know, as an independent person, 
I was like, oh, if I really want to do this for a career, I have to learn marketing because I have to make a profit off my movies because that's what, that's how I pay people. That's how I keep the lights on, so to speak. That's how I keep this going. And it's not like, oh, I want to make profits so I can buy a yacht or whatever. <laughs> I don't need a yacht. You know what's ironic? My friend, she's like, she wants a yacht. <laughs> I was like, are you crazy? They're really expensive. <coughs> okay, um, so, nothing against yachts. I'm, I'm sure they're great. Boats are awesome. But she's like, yeah, Julie, get a yacht. I was like, with, with what? Imaginary money? Okay, so let's, let's continue. You know what's funny? She wants a yacht. So I go to a gay affirming church. I go to a church where they believe homosexuality is not a sin and it's gay people and straight people going to church together. That's a whole can of worms. I know it just opened and you can check out the videos I made about that below. But the only reason I bring that up, my friend wants me to have a yacht so we can do Bible study on it. <laughs> I mean, okay. So I was, I was like, I remember I was having dinner with my friend and I was like, you know, I want to be successful, but I don't care if I own a yacht. And she's like, you should have a, you should totally own a yacht. We could have brunch and Bible study on it. And I was like, She's so sweet. <laughs> She's so sweet. So cut to one yacht and people are partying and having a blast. Cut to our yacht and we're having brunch and reading the Bible. <laughs> My friend is awesome. Okay, so I don't want to make money so I can buy a yacht. That's not my cup of tea. Um, like if I had money money, I would buy the entire He-Man action figure set and the Skeletor castle from the 1980s in original condition. Okay, anyway, enough about my luxurious, uh, anyway, fantasies. Okay, uh, but anyway, I, yes, I don't want to make money to, to buy a yacht, blah, blah, blah. I, just to keep the ball rolling, that's when I realized, oh, learning something about marketing is important if you're going to make a feature film. Before you, when you sit, even when you sit down to write the screenplay, just think about, and you're going to make it yourself, think about how you're going to market it. Okay. And a lot of people don't know what marketing is. Marketing, once I started work, uh, <laughs> marketing, once I started um, studying it, I want to make this clear. Because again, I grew up poor. And when you grow up poor, you're taught that like, rich people are mean and that's not true it's not true at all rich people are people so and when i grew up poor some poor people are mean some poor people are nice now i will say all poor people are dealing with a certain stress level because they're poor but it's the same thing with rich people some rich pre rich people especially because i live out here in san francisco it's a very affluent area some rich people are kind and generous and amazing and awesome and some are not People are people, right? Okay, so, but here's the deal with marketing. Marketing is not screwing people out of their money because I can't get behind that, right? I just can't. Yes, I'm ambitious. Yes, I want to own money so I can buy, I can add to my nerd collection. Uh, that's what I want to splurge on. Maybe get some vinyl. I don't know why I said that. That was, yeah, I do want, <laughs> my favorite pop punk band from the 90s. They're called MXPX. I guess I could get any of this stuff now. Anyway, whatever. I do want all their albums on vinyl. I <laughs> don't know how I feel about that. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, so marketing. Marketing is not screwing people out of their money. Marketing is, especially modern day marketing, if you're a bleeding heart, I'm a bleeding heart. Marketing is just being of service to others. What? It really is. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, if you've never read a book about marketing and I'm boring you to death, if you really wanna do this, if you really wanna make movies, uh, you're gonna need to learn marketing because it, it's, it's called show business. There's a business aspect to it. And if you're a bleeding heart creative person, that's what I am. Uh, okay, start with Seth Godin. I'm subscribed to his email, no, his blog. His blog comes into my email every every day. Seth Godin, this is called This Is Marketing. 
Seth Godin, this is Tribes, both great books. And then uh, Brandon Bouchard, if you go to his website, uh, this is a really great book. It's a personal development book. Totally recommend it. But if you go to his website, he talks about, um, oh, he, he has marketing. He gives really great marketing advice for like, and what I like about his marketing advice, it's for like regular people. I mean, it's also, he advises huge companies, like huge companies, but, uh, really he just started, he was just this dude. He started off as this dude who quit his job and started writing books and he just used social media as marketing tools and he made it. So what he does is he gives really practical marketing advice for like regular people, which is right now what I am. I'm just like a regular person. He gives great marketing advice on how to market and it's not screwing people out of their money. Uh, I don't want money from anybody if it's not, if I'm not providing a service that is good, um, that isn't pr uh, bringing value to their lives. I don't want a penny if what I'm providing isn't adding value to people's lives. I don't want the yacht for Bible study <laughs> if I'm not uh, providing service that brings value to people's lives. Uh, so I believe in my romantic comedy that I made. Uh, you can check out the trailer below, but I really believe in it. I know it's a good product, so to speak, but I also know it will bring value and catharsis to people's lives. Also, it's like priced so low. It's less than $10. <laughs> it's not expensive, but at the same time, I hate, especially right now, I understand the value of a dollar. I understand how hard most or all of us work. So, but yeah, and so right now, um, I'm learning marketing. Cause I was like, yeah, when I got into filmmaking and I was like, I can learn, and I knew what my calling is. I know my calling isn't necessarily cinematography by itself. <coughs> my cinematographer, Alicia, her calling is a uh, cinematographer cinematography. I love that woman. Uh, my cinematographer is, 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 uh, heterosexual. I'm super gay. Uh, but she's definitely one of the loves of my life. Uh, uh, <laughs> we're just friends, but she's one of my soulmates for sure. I love that woman and uh, we're like peas and carrots, like, uh, Jenny and Forrest. Okay, but uh, Forrest Gump reference, um, movie that came out in the 90s. I'm just kidding. You guys have to know what Forrest Gump is. If you don't, you should watch it. Okay. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, marketing. Um, I had to, but anyway, my point is, once I got into filmmaking, I was like, well, what I realized, I can't just study cinematography because that's not my calling. I can't just study screenwriting or any of it because I know for me, I'm kind of doing my own thing up here in San Francisco, but I was like, I need to learn how to run a business because that's what I kind of want to do. I want to do my own thing up here. Uh, and just because, you know what I mean? Like, hey, Hollywood's better than me. Hollywood's better funded than me. I, I love tentpole movies. Uh, I love the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I've seen every one of those movies. Opening night at my favorite movie theater in Oakland. So, hey, <laughs> Hollywood's awesome. Super awesome. But for me, I just feel a calling in my heart and soul to kind of uh, do my thing up here in San Francisco. If I get a phone call for some reason from Hollywood, I'll take the phone call. First, I'll be like, hey, hey, Hollywood, how'd you, how'd you get my number? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but still, oh, you want to hire me to entertain people through screenwriting or acting or directing? Uh, and you'll pay me lots of money to do it. Um, okay, sure, sounds great. So I just want to say, for sure, if I get those phone calls from Hollywood and they want me to, uh, I don't know, do stuff, <laughs> sounds great, you know what I mean? But I just felt a calling in my soul to kind of, at first, do my own thing up here in San Francisco, and that's when I learned, I gotta learn how to run a business. I gotta learn how marketing works. That's the most important thing I need to learn Besides like Alicia, my cinematographer, who I love with all my heart, she's studying cinematography because our next movie is going to be awesome. Uh, we're so we're so excited about our next movie. 
But, uh, but first start with Geek Less Punk, the romantic comedy, because it's super awesome. So anyway, but, but I realized it's like, you know, so I had some acquaintances who were like, you should study cinematography. I was like, well, that's not really what I, what I want to do. Or no, you should study how to do like, uh, something behind the scenes. And I was like, well, that's kind of, uh, I'm not sure if that's quite what I want to do. I want to run my own company or I want to be a producer, that kind of thing. And that I'm not being arrogant or braggadocious or, you know, look at me, man. I'm like indie. I'm not doing that. That's silly when people do that. Uh, yeah, if Hollywood, I, I don't do that. Most of my favorite movies are tentpole movies. Okay, Jurassic Park, tentpole movie, great movie. Okay, it's a, if, I may, if I may, it's a intellectual. It's a thinking person's tentpole movie. Thank you very much. A thinking person's popcorn movie. But anyway. <laughs> because the first 45 minutes of Jurassic Park, they're just talking about science the whole time. Nerd! Just kidding, I'm a nerd. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, uh, the point is, if you've never seen Jurassic Park, you should watch it. Okay, but okay. <laughs> but anyway, I feel a calling to be up here in the Bay Area and kind of do my own thing first. And then for sure, maybe I'll mosey on down to LA with a bodyguard. Just kidding. <laughs> I've heard some scary things about LA. But I've also heard there's a lot of great people in LA. <laughs> Enough of that. Okay, <clears throat> but I'm gonna stay in uh, San Francisco, do my own thing. And, um, and and so in the case, so anyway, that's when I learned the most important thing I need to learn if I'm gonna do this filmmaking thing, I, I need to learn marketing. Uh, and there, nowadays marketing, it is about being personal. It is about being a bleeding heart. It is about being authentic and and um, vulnerable. Like right now, it, it, a lot of it's about social media, like being on Facebook, being on Instagram, and people want something personal from you. So modern day marketing, it's perfect for artsy fartsy people <laughs> like me and you. Uh, marketing's great and it's accessible. Buying, I haven't bought a Facebook ad yet, but Facebook ads, they're not expensive. They're not expensive at all. We can afford it, regular people. We cannot afford to put a commercial during the Super Bowl. That's like millions of dollars. Uh, but we sure can't afford to do a Facebook ad that goes in front of thousands of people. And we're just, I'm just a regular person. So it's so exciting. And it's so exciting that how accessible marketing is getting for like regular people. And then finally, the last thing I want to say is um, about marketing. Yeah, marketing, it's not about screwing people out of money. It's about letting people know, hey, I have this awesome product or service that will make your life that much sweeter. And in my case, it's a romantic comedy. Uh, so I believe in my product, you know what I mean? Uh, so, but my point in saying that is, yeah, modern day, modern day marketing uh, oh, yes, and I went to a marketing conference here in, in the San Francisco Bay Area, and what I learned was they said uh, to come up with three words that represent who you are, and I really liked it. And for me, it was love, joy, and kindness. So really what I'm marketing is the concepts of love, joy, and kindness. And those are the things I want to spread on planet Earth, more love, more joy and more kindness. I say joy as someone who's dealt with depression like all my life. That's why it's so important to find the joke, find the humor if you can. Laugh, because laughter is good medicine. I know that's cheesy, but you know. But okay, so <coughs> the marketing conference, or even Brandon Burchard has talked about, uh, Brandon Burchard has talked about coming up with just three words that kind of represents who you are in a way. So for me, it was love, joy, and kindness. So at the end of the day, what I, you know, what I've gone with is, I'm not even. I know this is maybe cheesy, but embrace the cheese. Uh, I'm not even marketing my movie necessarily. I am marketing the concepts of love, joy, and kindness. And then, if you happen to want to watch my movie, awesome. <laughs> But I am marketing something that doesn't cost any money. I am marketing love, 
joy and kindness. I am marketing free concepts. And the bleeding heart in me feels really good about that. Uh, I want you to feel more love in your life. I want you to feel more joy in your life. Um, I want you to experience and provide yourself with more kindness in life. I am asking you to do that. That, my friend, is what I'm marketing if you happen to want to watch my movie. Don't let me stop you. <laughs> but the things I'm marketing are really awesome, positive things. So I'm studying marketing from Seth Godin. This guy's a genius. He says the same stuff that I'm saying. He's a bleeding heart too. <laughs> Trust me, marketing is not screwing people out of their money. Marketing is just providing value to humans. That's all it is. I promise, if you don't know anything about marketing. Okay, especially if you're artsy-fartsy. I'm artsy-fartsy too. Okay, <clears throat> so you hear business and you get a little artsy-fartsy people. We hear the word business. We get a little antsy and it's like, no, nothing to be antsy about. Okay. Um, and finally, I want to show you the other thing I'm studying while my cinematographer studies cinematography. She's a genius. I love that woman. Hi, Alicia. And I'm also studying one of my inspirations because when I was a kid, this is all we really watched. Okay. Walt Disney. Okay. The Man. So this is a book about, uh, it's called Ink and Paint, The Women of Walt Disney's Animation written by Mindy Johnson. My sister, who's awesome, hi Jessica, love you, <laughs> she gave me for my birthday this book, and it's huge. I mean, it's like, it's heavy, and it's huge, and really, it's really about the history of all the women who worked for Walt Disney. And honestly, what it's about is the relationship that Walt Disney had with women. By the way, he thought they were cool. <laughs> and speaking in Hollywood terms, Hollywood terms, Walt Disney wasn't perfect, but c considering some of the scary stories I've heard about Hollywood, um, Walt Disney was a pretty decent guy. Like, he just was. Uh, he just was. He wasn't perfect. There's definitely, like, cultural insensitivities in some of his movies that are not cool and etc. But he was a pretty decent guy, uh, especially by, especially compared to some of the stories I've heard about other people. So, um... Because in California, I live in California, I live in San Francisco, even all the way up in San Francisco, I'm like six or seven hours uh, away from LA, but there's people up here who've worked down in LA, you know, they told me st stories that are terrifying, but okay, so <laughs> anyway, but there's good people in LA too, right? Good people are everywhere, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me, but, but anyway. The point of this is just that Walt Disney was a decent person, like, he just was. He's an entertainer who was a decent human being. And, um, he wasn't perfect, but pretty decent. And, uh, but he was a true storyteller, true genius. And what I'm doing in reading this book, and I'm also listening to another book, I'm learning how he ran the studio. That's what I'm learning. I'm learning how the studio got ran. And so I'm learning about how to run an entertainment company, right? And hey, I'm teeny, 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 tiny, cannot emphasize that enough, but I'm going to learn from the greats like Walt Disney. I, I got Disney Plus and I'm like blown away at just how stunning uh, the early animation was. Um, but anyway, <coughs> just how talented. Uh, anyway, so my point is, uh, step three is if you're really going to make feature films, you want to learn a thing or two about marketing um, because it just it costs money to make movies. And so you just, but it, here's what I want to say because this, I don't know if this video has been kind of negative, but what I, what I want to say is <clears throat> when I'm making movies, like any aspect of it, even making this video, every part of me feels completely alive, like I'm doing the right thing. And I've been doing this for years, years, and you've never heard of me. <laughs> but I'm not doing it for the fame. I'm not even doing it for the money. I don't have either. I'm doing it uh, because I just feel a calling in my heart to do this. And so, and I want to market the concepts of love, joy, and kindness in the world because we really need those things now. We really need them now. So, yes, 
Uh, these are my tips. Intro to filmmaking. If you want to get into filmmaking, step one, just embrace the technology, right? And don't be intimidated by it. Two, find people who will high five you for being a filmmaker. Find a source of support. There's good good people every everywhere. And three, you know, once you got the technology down, once you've got the artsy farsiness down of filmmaking, you've got a great group of people who are high fiving you for making movies. The third thing you want to do is you want to learn how to run a business and how to do marketing because those things, it, it is a business. Oh, the other thing I would recommend. Okay, so this is uh, the Right Brain Business Plan. Uh, a Creative Visual Map for Success by Jennifer Lee. It's a pretty good book. Learn how, you're, you're going to need to learn business, but learn it, and you're going to learn it in a way, in the most altruistic way possible. So yeah, learn marketing. And listen, uh... I love filmmaking. I absolutely love it. This is my calling in life. It's amazing. So I'm going to keep going. Uh, I'm definitely going to keep going. So if everything I've told you, if there's this stirring in your heart and soul, like I have to do this, then you, my friend, have to do this. You, my friend, are a filmmaker and you should do it. You should be a filmmaker. It's worth it. It's totally worth it. It's worth the sacrifice and the blood, sweat, and tears. It's totally worth it because I just feel a stirring in my heart. So, I, I, so so, if you're watching this and you feel a stirring in your heart and everything I've said to you just gets you all excited and happy, then you, my friend, should, should, should pick up a camera today and make a movie because it's totally worth it. And I have a feeling like uh, the Black Eyed Peas. They have that song. I have a feeling. <laughs> okay. For them, they're having a feeling that tonight's going to be a good night. I'm now having a feeling that this life is going to continue being an awesome life. And so I have a feeling that if you really feel a calling in your soul to follow your dreams, then your dreams will come true. So if you feel a stirring in your heart to be a filmmaker, then join me. You and me are comrades. You and me are colleagues. You and me are potential buddies and friends. And if you're cute, no, just kidding. But if, <laughs> we're all cute, we're all children of God, we're all beautiful. But okay, you're my buddy, you're my friend. So uh, if you feel a, a stirring in your heart and soul that filmmaking is something you want to do, even if you just want to dabble in it, my friend, my comrade, my soulmate, pick up a camera and make a movie. And if you do make one, like a short film, start with a short film, those are easy. Uh, send it to me. If you're gonna start with a feature film, ooh, lordy, that will make a man or a woman or whatever gender you are, that will make a, it's gonna make a man out of you or a woman out of you or a person out of you because ooh, lordy, it's so much work to make a feature film. But, <clears throat> okay, if you wanna be a filmmaker, go for it, do it, just go for it. Uh, you'll never be the same in a good way. Okay, uh, if you like this movie, <laughs> film, uh, video. If you like this video, uh, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, but also, uh, yeah, so hang out, check out my other videos on this YouTube channel, and have a ball on YouTube. But also, uh, once you're having a blast on YouTube, if you want to mosey on over to my website, you can check out check it out at www juliekerrrstudios.com and you can check out my website. You can join my email list. If you join my email list, you get free weekly content that's only available through my email and I send you motivational stuff, uh, just all kinds of awesome stuff. And also, if you join my email list, you get immediate access to my a free PDF that I uh, created and a free video that I made that helps you learn how to cultivate more love, joy, and kindness into your life every day. I grew up in an abusive home. I'm fine. But uh, I, because of that, I dealt with a lot of sadness. And uh, I now got into a lot of personal development. And I have these daily habits that I do every day that just make me feel good. Uh, see, don't I look happy? <laughs> so I want you to feel good. And so if you, if you join my email list, you immediately get access to the free PDF that I designed and you get a free p video that shows you how to use the PDF to just feel good every day. And if you feel good every day, then you're in a good place. 
to make movies. So yeah, join my email list. That's where you can also check out my movie trailer. Uh, yeah, and you can uh, also check out my movie. It's available on my website. Uh, all the ways you, if you just want to go crazy and check out all the ways you can connect with me, you'll see like a bunch of uh, links down below. Thank you for watching this movie. Uh, I'm sorry. Thank you for watch this, watching this video. And uh, follow your dreams, make movies, be awesome, and be good to yourself. All right, I am Julie Kerr, writer and director of the romantic comedy Geek Plus Punk. Thank you so much for watching, and God bless.